What's up guys, c 13 here, and today I'm going to show you how to change out a door lock actuator on a Mercury Marauder, Lincoln Town Car, Crown Vic, or Grand Marquis without having to drill and re-rivet the bracket. Alright guys, so here we are, and here's the door panel. Now before I jump in, I just want to go over once again an explanation of what we're going to actually be doing. A common misconception that people have is that the only way to install one of these is to drill through the rivet that's in the door and then re-rivet the new lock actuator. While that might seem like the simpler solution, and no doubt if you don't want to go through the hand gymnastics you're going to need to do, you can just do that. It can oftentimes be difficult to get a rivet to stick exactly the same way as it was done at the factory. Uh, and I know that I've seen uh, friends struggle with this. And sometimes if you don't rivet it just correctly, it falls off. And there's nothing worse than having the lock actuator detached from the inside of the door. And then now you got to pull the door panel off and do the whole thing all over again just because the rivet failed. So here's what we're going to actually be doing. Now, although it seems like this is going to be difficult to do with your hand, I assure you that the factory bracket is way less tight than these aftermarket ones. But basically, what we're going to go in and do is take our tool. In this case, I'm just using a flathead screwdriver. And we're going to get behind the metal bracket. Now, you see it's held in with these uh, cast-in studs in the plastic. And in this case, for the Marauder, I'm pretty sure this is correct, the correct position. Uh, but there's also other positions, as you can see here. But just make sure to take note of where the factory one is and you'll see when we do the actual door panel removal the factory door lock actuator has a rubber sheath that goes over the entire thing including over here where you can see this one has a sort of bellows type arrangement the factory one doesn't have this boot and instead has a rubber sheath whole body boot that goes over the whole actuator but still take note of which stud it's using you're going to take the tool get underneath the bracket and as you can see you're going to lift it up, and you have to keep in mind that this is going to be attached, so you're going to be able to pull against this. It's a little harder to do when it's just by itself, but you can see there, comes right off, and then you're going to pull the actuator out. And then when you reinstall, you're going to do the opposite. So keep in mind, this is attached. Of course, there's going to be less room in there, but this is, this is what the concept is. You slide it in, make sure to go in, in this direction, trying to go in the other way, and put this, this end in first, it's going to be very difficult to line up that back, that back hole. So instead, you want to line up that back hole first and get it in place. You can see it's pretty easy. And once it slides into place, the key and the trick is going to be lifting this up while it's there, and then you'll see it slides right into place. Now, it's going to be trickier working in the door, obviously, because you've got a much smaller access hole. But still, I can tell you, I've done this before, it is possible. And it saves you a lot of time and stress of worrying about having to re-rivet the door and then the rivet maybe not being the right color. Sometimes the rivets are color matched with the door and so again, you don't have to worry about that. You're not gonna have to worry about riveting anything. So now let's go ahead and get into the door panel removal so that we can replace this door lock actuator. All right guys, so to start the removal, we're gonna first remove this one Phillips head screw right here. Next, there are two seven millimeter bolts on the bottom. So we're gonna go ahead and get those out now. Now, they're not held in very tightly, so you might not even need a ratchet. I'm just gonna use my little extension uh, and my seven millimeter socket. There's one. And there's two. So next, I like to remove the top of the lock actuator shaft. Now you can see here, this isn't going to be critical, but it makes removing the door panel easier. So we'll go ahead and remove that. It just unscrews. There you go. Okay, next we have to remove the hex bolt that's behind this little panel right here. Now don't just go prying with a screwdriver. You will damage that little piece, and these covers are ridiculously expensive to purchase. Uh, I know when I had my town car that I went to the dealer to price this out because, of course, every single one in the junkyard was broken. And they were asking for this little tiny cover right in here. They were asking $43. Keep in mind, this is a tiny piece of plastic. So 
we want to do anything we can to avoid breaking this. Now here's what you need. You need a small pick, as you can see here, and you want a pick that looks kind of like this, because you want this, let's see if you can see that, guys. You can see, or I don't know why you can't see it, but it's a little blurry, but you're gonna go ahead and start at the, at the bottom and work it into the gap and lift up and pull out. So get it into the gap and try to push in that tab because there's a tab on the inside. So you want to push the tab up and that's gonna free it from the bottom. All right, and then once you got it out, it'll just come right off. There you go. And now you can see how it works. There's two clips and you basically need to get your tool underneath the gap and force up this tab. Once you do, she'll just pull right out. And behind here is a, a star bit. I'm not really sure exactly which one I use, but basically if you've got an array of bits that look like this, you know, just find the one that fits. But in my case, I found the one that fits. There we go. And now I'd say this is the trickiest part. It, it can be a little scary, but I promise you, if you do it right and you take it slow, you shouldn't break anything. Our next fastener is located below this switch panel. Thing with the switch panel is, is it's clipped in. Now, you know, if you ask me, wouldn't be my first design. Uh, this is a terribly annoying and dangerous design in the sense that, you know, repeated disassembly can eventually break it, especially if it's not done correctly. Now, that being said, it's pretty obvious that they did this for cost saving. It's pretty easy to put the screw behind there and then just clip the whole thing on. It's made to be put together easily and not removed. But that being said, let's go ahead and do it. So there's gonna be a small hole right over here. If you look over here, you'll see a gap and that's where you can fit in a screwdriver. And once you fit in your screwdriver, you're gonna find the top of the section and just pop it right up. And it sounds terrible and it feels terrible, but you can see those clips are still intact. So it's just a matter of trying to pull this if you can, but generally you just have to pull up. There's not gonna be an easy way to get a pick in there to pull this tab back. But you can see it's pretty aggressive in the clips, but uh, the holes are okay. So once you've got your switch panel out, you're gonna disconnect all these connectors. We'll start with these. And this one, you wanna take your flathead Get behind that locking tab. There you go. Now set your switch panel to the side. Now if we move all of our harnesses to the right and push them down, you can see another seven millimeter fastener right there. This one also shouldn't be too tight, but if you need to, you may need a ratchet for this one. Get your ratchet in there. And once it comes loose, you can get rid of the ratchet. So once it comes loose, just reach down in and there you go. Now also be sure to set this aside and don't confuse it with the other two because even though they all are seven millimeter, the other two are different in length and have a slightly different thread pitch. All right, now removing the door panel, you wanna start by pushing down your lock bar up here. So push that down. Now before we can get any further, we have to remove this piece of plastic trim here as well. So for that, you're gonna to wanna to grab your screwdriver. Pop it out and pull it back. As you can see there, be sure not to pull on the bottom. You'll stress this tab. Now, once we've got everything out, we've got that trim out, we've got this push down, we've got all our fasteners removed. Go ahead and get right underneath here where the door pole is. You're gonna push from underneath here. Now yours will probably come off a little easier. I've got some sound deadening behind there that's making the door panel a little more difficult to get out just because it adds thickness. And as a result, it makes the door panel a little bit more tricky to get off. But once you free it up, tilt it back. And the next thing you're gonna have to do is run all these connectors through the different holes. So just make sure you pull those free, fish them through. And then also, I'm gonna bring you over the top. You're gonna to need to disconnect the power seat connector right here. And you're also gonna to have to take care of your power fuel door release and your trunk release down here. 
So I'm gonna take care of those and I'll be right back. All right guys, once you've got everything free, you can put the door panel to the side. Now to avoid damage to the door panel, I usually like to put this in the back seat of the car. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. Okay, so now that you get the door panel free, you're gonna have to pull back your uh, vapor shield right here. And to avoid more damage to the adhesive, I usually like to roll it up right there so it's out of the way. Now try to route your harness so that it's not gonna bother you as much. If you can, fit it into one of these holes up here. Otherwise, you can just tuck it right where the vapor shield was as well. Okay, so your only access hole is gonna be right in here. Now, another thing that I should have done before I started, remove any watches or jewelry you might be wearing because uh, you're gonna be getting down and dirty into that hole right here. All right, so it's gonna be very difficult for me to show you what's going on, but I'm gonna try to adjust the camera angle so it's a little bit better. Give me one second. All right, guys, I know the angle is not the best, but hopefully you can see inside there, that's our door lock actuator. And just like I was saying before, there is a sort of full body boot that goes over both the uh, moving section of your locking rod as well as the actual body of the actuator itself. So the first step is gonna be disconnecting the connector. Uh, that's pretty easy, you just reach in there, pull back on the tab, and there's your connector. So we'll move that to the side. And then the trickier part is gonna be looking in this right here. This window is gonna be your key to see what's going on in there. And then you're gonna grab your flathead screwdriver. And removal, removal is always a relatively easy process when compared to installation, but go ahead and pro get underneath the top part of your bracket. And once you get it slightly popped out of the bracket, it should be pretty easy to remove and work out. So now that it's free, I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's no longer in the bracket, but it's still attached to the linkage. So you're gonna use your hands. You can't see any of this, so you're gonna have to feel around in there. Use your hands uh, and find the top of the actuator where it meets up with the linkage. And once you find that, you're gonna to have to lift up on it and twist it to the left and then push to the left. Because remember, if we look at the top of the new actuator, this is exactly the same as the old one. The top of the actuator rod has got a sort of hooked shape to it, as you can see. So this hooked shape, you need to basically, it's gonna sit in like this in the neutral position. Well, you need to work it through like that. So basically you're going to twist it to the left and then you're going to push to the left and that's going to allow you to free it up from the linkage. So let's go ahead and do that now. Again, my apologies that I can't show you any of this, but it should be pretty obvious what's going on once you're feeling inside the door panel. Just go slow just, and, and don't you don't need to force it. Nothing takes a lot of force here. And there you go. There's our old actuator. As you can see, you can see what I was talking about with the full body boot here. But um, basically, you know, if you want to test it, once you have it all apart and you want to test your new one, obviously before you put everything back together, you plug it back in and then you plug your lock switch back in over here. Go ahead and test it. So this will show you how the old one wasn't really functioning right. So you can see how slow it's moving. And as you can see there, it totally stopped moving. That's usually the experience that I was noticing. The first or second unlock within a 20 minute period, it would open just fine. But after that, you need to wait for it to cool down again. And you can see the motor just not spinning anymore. So that's our problem. But of course, we wanna test the new one because we don't wanna put everything back together and find out that it doesn't work. So let's go ahead and pull this connector off. We'll plug in our new actuator. And I'll leave the link in the description for uh, where I bought this actuator. I got it on Amazon. But uh, let's go ahead and test out this lock. Oh yeah, that's a lot better. Now I am noticing that the boot has slipped off the top. So we're gonna wanna make sure that that's lined up. So let's push that down because we don't want any water ingress into the actuator. So let's go ahead and get this boot all the way around. Should sit flush like that. Let's try this again. Huh. So it would appear that this boot is actually improperly sized for this actuator. 
Let's give this a try here. Yeah, I don't know if you guys can see that, but the boot keeps slipping off. Uh, it's a little bit too short for the amount of travel that this actuator has. So, you know, I'm just going to have to live with that. Unfortunately, that might shorten the life of this actuator. You know, it sort of is what it is here. And that's kind of the nature of the beast when it comes to aftermarket actuators. You know, you're always going to have to worry about, you know, compatibility and that sort of thing. I have no doubt that this is going to work just fine. The question is, without the boot being intact and fully sealing off the shaft there, you know, who knows how much water is going to make it down into the actuator. But th this shouldn't be a problem. Um, but again, I would recommend that you try and find one if you can that is a little bit better than this in terms of the boot. But, you know, that your mileage may vary. But anyway, we'll, um, we'll just line it up the best we can and go with that. Well, now that we know it works, we need to line up and reinstall this into the linkage. Now, that's the tricky part. But again, you're going to need to reach up in there and just feel around. So first, you're gonna look with your light and see if you can see the linkage in your car. Now, I know for the Marauder, uh, it's impossible to see the linkage. You're gonna have to do this all by feel. But again, if you remember what it felt like when you removed the old actuator, this shouldn't be difficult. Now, before you go in there, obviously, we're gonna need to remember to remove this bracket because we're gonna be using the same old bracket and we don't need this because obviously we're not gonna install a new rivet. And now you're just going to have to keep in mind that this is the hole that we want to use because if we peel back the boot on the old one, that was also the same hole that they used on the old actuator. And you can see, of course, that although the actuator shape is a little bit different, the level of the hole is at the same location. And that's going to give us proper actuation. You also want to note the direction of install. So, of course, the actuator was installed in this direction. But again, we have to keep in mind also the difference in actuator. So for us, we're going to want this right over here because that puts our stud right in the same place for the bracket because it's a smaller shaped actuator. Let's go ahead and install this. And remember also, this needs to be in this direction, not in this direction. So you're just going to want to install it in that way. Now you're going to reach up into the door and first find the bracket with your fingers, which is right over here and then reach up and find the linkage. What you're looking for is what feels like a small plastic grommet. And that is exactly what the end of the actuator shaft interfaces with. So once you find that little grommet, then you're gonna grab the actuator body and you're gonna attempt to align it. This is kind of the worst part of it because you are kind of going blind here. Okay guys, after a little bit of struggle, I've got the actuator in, but now it's just hanging. So we have to get it installed back on the bracket. So once again, make sure that it's facing the correct way. Okay, and I've got it popped into the bracket now. Like again, like I said, it's really difficult to explain this and show it on camera, but hopefully I was able to show you earlier when I was using this bracket. Basically, you wanna take the actuator and fold it in uh, and twist it in to get the rear stud locked into place first and then lining up the front one is much easier because you can see it. Now once it's popped into place, the last thing to do is take our harness connector, connect it to the lock actuator, and let's give it a test. Yep, she's working. So anyway guys, I hope you liked this video. If you liked it, be sure to give me a like. If you want to see where I bought this thing, and I'll leave a link for the actuator I use in the description, as well as uh, any high quality ones that I can find. And uh, definitely, if you want to see more, be sure to get subscribed. And if you have anything else that you want to see how to do on this car or anything like that, be sure to leave it in the comments. And if it's something that I'm going to end up needing to do anyway, I'll be sure to make a video on it. So definitely get subscribed if you want to see more.